ladies and gentlemen as a support from EACTA to all frontline fighters against COVID-19 outbreak we are presenting this webcast on tips and tricks for safe airway management I am Mohammed Tahan, Professor of Cardiothoracic Anesthesia and Surgical Intensive Care at Mansoura University in Egypt and I am currently working at Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University at the MAM Saudi Arabia. I received free airway device samples from AMBO in 2014 and AirTrack in 2015 for use in three published studies. I have no direct financial or other interest in AMBO AirTrack or other industry in the current of this webcast or my studies. The objectives of this webcast to summarize the comparison of different consensus released on airway management for COVID-19 patients and to provide some recommendations on lung isolation, isolation or separation for patients with COVID-19 either confirmed or suspected who might undergo thoracic surgery. COVID-19 outbreak as you can access on WHO, WHO website accessed on March 22nd, there are 267 hundred confirmed cases with more than 11,200 deaths. There are different released recommendations from different societies on airway management for COVID-19 patients including the Faculty of Intensive Care Medicine, Intensive Care Society, Association of Anesthetists and the Royal College of Anesthetists of UK. Additionally, CRT from the CRT Airway Management Research Group and the Professor Massimiliano Sorpero from University of Catania. There is another consensus from the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists there is also recommendations for airway management in a patient with suspected coronavirus infection from Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation and a rare published article from UK on what anesthetist should know about the COVID outbreak. There is also uh, recommendations published in Canadian Journal of Anesthesiology and uh, recommendations for critical care and nostalgia team. Also, there is a consensus statement on safe airway society principles for airway management and the trachea intubation specific to the COVID-19 adult patient group coming from Australian group. You have to know there are potential risk for trachea intubation for COVID-19 patients because it's a very high risk procedure, not only for staff, but also because of the clinical severity of the disease as most of these patients coming with severe SARS-CoV-2. SES is adapted by the UK group, including Royal College of Anesthesiologists which is the acronym including S standing for safe for staff and patient. A accurate avoiding unreliable, unfamiliar or repeated techniques and S standing for swift, timely without rush or delay. You have to think about early warning scores for tracheal intubation. It is a very important to intubate these patients on elective basis rather than to be enforced to intubate them in emergency situations. Also, we should identify cases with doctor state orders to exclude them, as well as balance the benefits between using of CBAB, BiBAB, non-invasive ventilation, high flu nasal oxygen versus risk for airborne diffusion. On the left photo and middle photo, you can see the using of face mask, CBAB, and high flu nasal oxygen. It is not recommended, 
by most of societies to use them in this COVID patients. Italian group, including CRT, they are recommended using CBEB with helmet. However, some others, despite some others strictly advise against nasal or face mask CBEB, others permit to use OptiFlu. As I told you, intubation, if required, should be elective procedure because emergency increases patient's risk. Intubation team, we should limit staff present at recal intubation. Inside the room, there should be one most expert practitioner who would intubate the patient, second doctor for unanticipated difficulty, one nurse or doctor to administer drugs and monitor the patient. Outside the room, there should be a runner, who is usually a doctor, available for a case of need for CPR. Outside the room, there should be a BBE personal protection equipment donning and doffing observer. Here is a simulation for the floor plan for intubation room, which is usually a negative pressure room if feasible. Here is the entrance to the room and inside the room here is the patient bed. The intubator should stand against the head of the patient. Second doctor should be here on the right side to help for keracoid pressure and to handle the equipment which is present here on this tray. Patient monitor is here and here is the nurse or a doctor to administer drugs and there should be expert assistant as well. All of this room should be visible to the runner outside through a window for uh, visualize the endotracheal intubation in outside room. All of these four team members should be equipped with PBE, personal protection equipment, warm, and there is entrance to the outside room. Where is the outside? There is a BE tuning, nothing observer. Intubation team. You have also to consider excluding staff who are vulnerable to infection from the airway team, those including elderly staff than 60 years, immunosuppressed pregnant ladies, or having serious comorbidities. Intubation trolley should be dedicated for COVID patients, including disposable staff, and uh, like uh, disposable plates for video laryngoscope or laryngoscopes, X tube exchanger, caster, airways, and second generation sobraglottic device, mask also there are several sizes. Here is an example for the list of the intubation trolley from the UK group, including BBE equipment up to four drugs and CMAC or other uh, video laryngoscopes, this visible C circuit, subroglottic device, capnography monitoring line, and Gudel airway, uh, adult Megil forceps, um, etc. Airway card should be ready, and disposable devices is usually preferable if feasible, particularly in the light of the ongoing shortages all over the infected countries. Suction, we should consider using of closed system suction to avoid aerosol transmission risk. BBE must worn at all time, usually including double gloving and defog goggles and or eyewear if possible. Touch as little as possible in the room to avoid vomits. Here is an example for equipped stuff with uh, all of this. Different levels and second level in case of airborne level recommended for airway management, including aerosol generating procedures like bronchoscopy, a weak endotracheal intubation, hair cover or hoods should be considered, fitted FFP2 and N95 mask. Googles or face felt, long sleeve fluid resistant gown, double gloves, and overshoes. A third level of personal protection equipment is recommended for.